Right, let's start building this drone. There's going to be lots and lots of stuff up in this. I built it once, taken it apart, taken photos of it built, and then probably forgotten where everything goes. But we'll do our best. Um, just bear with me if there's bloopers and things, we'll leave them in. And we'll do our best. <coughs> That's how we learn, by making mistakes. So all you students out there, you STEM and aerospace students, mistakes is where the deep learning occurs. Very little um, learning done when you have instant success you might have jagged it. Right, this is um, the bottom plate, I believe. I'll have to verify that, but that little uh, attachment, that little bumper bar, I'm gonna put that in straight away with these standoffs. Now, two sizes of standoffs, long one and a short one. And the four long ones go on the front. Yeah, it is the front where the camera, the camera mount goes in here. So these bits of carbon the camera is articulate in here and the FPV camera will go in between those put these in really quick Touch that bolt goes through and there's a standoff going in there electric makes life so much easy. The future is electric. Ooh. Light them up. Now this frame was made, designed and made in Brisbane by a company called Impulse RC. Right, got that on. There's the two short ones in the back part. Okay, um, so that's like a, a, a middle plate where the arms will be sandwiched in there, and the top plate will, top plate will, go on up here. Okay, we've got that, got that, got that looking good so far, but there's a long way to go. Now we're going to, um, before we. Because the arms get sandwiched in here, like this, while I remember, and you'll probably see me forget, those little holes, cutouts there in the arm, are for the motor shaft to articulate with. So the shaft, which hangs out the bottom, doesn't grind and bind against the arm. And cause the motor to probably draw too much current as it tries to throttle up and then draw too much current from the system and then everything just falls over and goes to custom. Okay, so before we put this down, um, these little um, nuts here have got little teeth on them that are drawn into the carbon. They've already been put in and they're not going to come out. But you would put those in, put this bolt through, tighten them in, this bolt here, it's smooth and then it's got the thread on the end, and tighten it right up to draw those nuts right down into the carbon. And there they'll stay for good. Right now, these particular um, bolts have got these little tiny, tiny washers on them. About that big. Don't inhale suddenly. Kill you. But they are going to go in the bottom of this bottom plate. Now the bottom plate, correction. This is the bottom plate. This is sort of this, this uh, middle level. It's not middle level because, but it's not the bottom plate. It's not the top plate. It's, it's just above bottom plate. So let's call it an interim plate or a middle level plate. So those little donuts, little O-rings, like that. In there, and this is for our flight controller to mount on. A flight controller for this little micro apex is has mounting holes of 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. You've got to make sure that you're buying a flight controller that will mount in the dog is going ballistic. Right. Probably a cat outside. Excuse me while I yell at the dog. 
Hey! Put a sock in it. Yep, she agreed with that. Goes, takes it to the next level. You got those O-rings in? Right, now this flight controller, first of all, go off to one side, come back to you. This flight controller is going to, uh, and the power distribution board are going to mount down onto here. And these are going to go on top of everything to secure it. These little nuts with the, the lock nut with the nylon, the nylon inside to lock them off. Lock it in, Eddie. So first of all, the power distribution board's going down. Careful again, every time I touch this jolly thing, I weaken the solar joints, but there's like, hey, there's not much I can do. Come through, I like that. Put my hands over the top. Grab all those four, hold them all together so I can gently lower it down, put everything out. There's my PDD down, power distribution board. My four arms placed up the correct way while I remember. As you can bet your bottom dollar, I'm going to forget to put them where that hole is. I'm going to put them around the wrong way. And my name will be Mud. Mud Base. It's down. Okay, power coming at the back. Thinking, thinking, thinking. And that's what I was looking for, the parts that I put off to one side. Then, now let's have a look at these solder joints here. Um, I've already soldered onto these ones, these um, eight, uh, 12 pads. And um, we'll do another video on, on how to solder them up. But the little copper solder pads on here, um, I would tin those first with a little bit of solder. There's a little bit of solder on each one. Be careful that the solder does not flow between each pad. That would be disastrous. Also be careful that we don't apply so much heat that we burn the pad off. Double bad day. We don't want the solder to flow between pads or we'll short between those two wires. Now this is a brushless electric motor. Okay, you can tell that because it's got three wires. So it's an AC motor. If it was a brushed a DC, a brushed B-R-U-S-H-E-D, a brushed DC motor, it would only have two wires. So it's brushless. Um, I kind of have to solder these down first off and then later on when we connect it to Betaflight, the software on my computer via the USB connection, we will um, then do a motor spin up with propellers off, always motors, always propellers off for safety. In case something goes wrong and it goes to full throttle and it takes your face off. But in this case, um, we'll use Betaflight in the software just in our mouse, move the slide and throttle the motors up. We'll see which way they spin. And um, for this particular aircraft, there's a picture of the two front blades, the left and right blade. You can see them. See the pitch on the blades? And they will go turn that way. All right, remember I mentioned the crab feeding itself. It goes that way into its mouth. Okay, so they'll go that way. Not all drones are like that, but lots are. And probably the bulk of drones front two motors spin that way and the corner motors the diagonals are the ones that spin in the same direction top left bottom right top right bottom left spin the same direction now I'm telling you that because um, if I get these motors around the wrong way if I get these wires sold up the wrong way the motors gonna spin backwards won't work drone will not aviate so all we have to do is desolder but it's yeah, soldering uh, pretend this is my soldering iron, the tip, and just desolder each point and swap any two wires over. Any two, it doesn't matter what two, swap them over, resolder it, and it will be fine, just like a bought one. Good, okay. So, a flight controller. Being very, very careful. Alright, a GPS connection. Is at the back there, cameras at the front. Now can you see that little arrow there? That pointing forward, okay? The way of flight, forward flight. That's how you want this to go. And with that arrow upwards, uppermost. Now you can mount these boards with that arrow facing sideways. Backwards, 
or even the whole board facing upside down. But um, if you'd have to tell Betaflight, well, through using Betaflight, the software, you would have to tell this board that it's not mounted in the correct orientation. So it knows which way, is, it's got to know which way is forward and which way is up. Or like a person. All right. I will probably later on take this apart again and show you how to solder where the solder points go. But this is just, this video is just on building the thing. Goes down like that. And um, from there, my decisions are whether to mount this board on top, this, um, what should I call it, video transmitter on top. I don't really want to. It's got 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter mounting holes. And that could go there. But it's going to generate, this, this little baby here can generate up to 600 milliwatts of power. That's a whole discussion in itself. The ACMA, uh, Australian Communications and Media Authority, say that we're only allowed for, uh, for 5 point gigahertz video transmitters, 25 milliwatts of power. That's what's called the class license. Part of your research is to find out from the ACMA what the three different licenses are. Let's have a little bit of a squeeze at that. While we're here, might as well make use of one note. Okay, so I'll just, um, let's go down here, start a new page. So what I'm talking about is the ACMA. ACMA, which is Australian Communications and media authority. Now you, you guys know all about CASA, correct? Well, the ACMA are the regulator for um, anything that is broadcast or that you want to send on the electromagnetic spectrum. So if you want to start a radio station, you apply to the ACMA. You want to start a, a um, TV station, you apply to the ACMA, and I'll tell you whether you can or can't. Because you can't just transmit on a certain frequency and everything's hunky-dory, everyone's fine. Because you might trash someone's um, Wi-Fi signal somewhere, someone's mobile phone signal somewhere if you're transmitting too high. So the ACMA look after that. Um, and for 5.8 gigahertz video transmitters, the class license in Australia, this by license, is 25 milliwatts. I call it 25 piddlywatts. It doesn't go very far, it might get you 100 meters on a good day, depending on what type of antennas you have. But also, there's a lot of talk, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of talk around the trap saying that uh, video can be considered to what's called telemetry. And people telemetry. People argue to their blue in the face about whether it is or whether it isn't. But um, I personally am considering it telemetry, which means you can go up to on a certain 5.8, let's say 5.8 gigahertz or 5.823 um, gigahertz frequency, or it might be 5.848. I don't know. But for some particular 5.8 frequency within the 5.8 band, you can go up to like one watt. Of output power if it's considered telemetry so part of your research you can have a look because in aerospace um, you know that um, safety and regulation underpins everything we do we just can't go and do whatever we want in, the, in aviation not in Australia not in any country perhaps in some sort of backwards tin pot banana republic thing you can do fly wherever you want and as high as you want but not in Australia and most countries around the world um, so, so this little video transmitter is, um, it can go up to 600 milliwatts. And incidentally, doubling, doubling the power doesn't give you double the distance. No, 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 no. And always consider your antennas, first of all. That's a whole different conversation. So putting, putting on top of this flight controller, putting all that heat, and this thing will get so hot at 600 milliwatts, you don't want to leave it sitting on the bench uncooled. You want it flying, lots of air circulating around it. So I'm not going to mount it there. All right. There are little holes down here, bam, which I might reconsider putting it down here. 
with the antenna coming out the back. They look to be the right distance apart. I actually had this mounted on the back of my GPS and it's just here. But I wasn't happy with it there either. So that's going to be something for me to have a bit of a think about. There is this large capacitor sitting in the way. I can gently bend it up. I want to have a look at how high, how much room I've got. And probably, excuse me, I'll connect. Why have I got the hiccups right now? Pro probably I will connect the video transmitter down there. Again, to see if I can put some sort of dampening, maybe some bits of foam under there. That little baby is going to get very hot at 600 milliwatts. Now, I would always try to, to, to transmit at something really, you know, a lot less, 25 milliwatts. It's much better for everyone. Maybe 100 milliwatt, milliwatts is the next step up, maybe 200 milliwatts if I can, if that's all I need. If you're racing drones, you don't want someone in <laughs> that you're racing against to be on 600 milliwatt. They will trash everyone else's signal, even if you are um, a different frequency within the 5.8 gigahertz band they will still impinge upon your video reception so racing it's pretty much all 25 milliwatts just like everyone's whispering together at the same time but we can all hear each other speak because we're not yelling okay typical school students all yelling at the same time and no one hears anyone hey but you hear yourself that's all that counts don't take that person other considerations is where this will go this um, this receiver here, this TBS, Team Black Sheep Crossfire Receiver, same kind of clip as the transmitter there. Um, and I had that mounted, I had that mounted somewhere, <laughs> but I can't remember. It might have actually been in this spot, which means I can't mount the video transmitter there. But I really want to mount the video transmitter there. That's taking my preference because this is a lot smaller and I can probably put him in different areas. I know that this will go at the front underneath like that. And I'll cable tie that on because I've got some holes there that I can cable tie that out of the way underneath. Um, considerations because this thing probably is flying above me on the ground more than it's flying below me and carbon fibre um, attenuates the signal. So um, the word is attenuates, which means it, it lowers or blocks or uh, brings down, attenuates the signal, which is not good when you're trying to control the drone and you have your, you're trying to control it to do something and you've got, you have some carbon fiber blocking your antenna. That can be dangerous. Attenuation. That's going to go there. Right. So far, so good. So move you out of the way, and let's get... This is going to be an interesting little sequence here. At this stage, I might even just... screw these down. I might just change some things. Just having a little bit of a think here. Can have a little bit of a think. And put you on pause. I'm going to just put you on pause, and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, back again. Just having a bit of a think of things, about things. I just had these um, brass inserts mounted that way, facing upwards. I'm thinking I'm going to reverse them. It's kind of a, a bit of a philosophical thing about building is you know, just don't expect to do the right thing all the time. You do your best. But as students often of anything, and even I might be a student of drone building, no matter how old I am, I think that the first thing I do is always going to be the correct thing, and it won't be. That's why we, in the problem-based life cycle way of doing solving problems, we develop ideas. You develop ideas about everything, and don't think that your final idea is going to be your, or, you know, your best idea is going to be a final one. Okay. Ultimately, you are going to have to generate a solution step three out of the PBL, but that's it's cyclic. You know, you'll come back and change things like I'm changing things to make it better. 
Okay, so you can see I've got those those inserts have gone down. Now I need itty bitty little fingers here. So once I get these on, I can move this board without fear of those. Um, that one's not on. One is. One isn't. And you can bet your bottom dollar that once you drop something small, it's some kind of weird phenomenon that any little tiny screw will bounce it immediately to the outside of the bench and then onto the carpeted floor and it'll be lost forever. If you were doing this on grass, if you're playing with any little screws on grass when you're trying to do some field repairs, put some kind of matting underneath or we'll do it over the top of some kind of tr matting card or something. Because if these go, any of these little screws go in the grass, you will never, ever, ever, ever find them. Ever. Ever. Right? No matter how much you look, you will never find them. Itty bitty little screws. Right, so put that on. I've got a tool here that was from one of my son's radio control car, which fits that. Alright, pull that over. Careful it doesn't fall out. That screw is going to... Yeah, Murphy's Law says these drop and go to sideways. This boring part, you feel free to fast forward it. Or whatever. Okay, so... I'm not going to over tighten these, just tighten down a little bit. I love this electrical screwdriver. Have I mentioned that I got it from JCAR? JCAR, there's a shop here, Redcliffe, a JCAR shop. I wish I lived in there. Also, there's another thing, often if you lose screws, check your electric motors because of the magnets inside, inside the bell. Often you find things hanging off, hanging off there. Ah, oh, that's where that went, I didn't lose it in the grass after all. Right, we're down, we've got that, it's nicely mounted. We're not going to drive that down so hard that I lose any, um, any um, suspension, any, um, what's it called? you know what it's called, softness, but I will secure that a bit more. Another thing, I don't know if I've mentioned it, but um, the direction of travel often is governed by whether you can get access via your USB port. You have to have access to your USB port. I've got this coming at the side. But you can imagine sometimes, like this little, um, bring it up here, this is my other Cinewhoop. Okay, with what's called Naked Naked Hero 8, a Hero 8 camera that's been stripped down, 120 grams down to about 20 grams, or maybe just over. Flying weight, sub 250 grams. Okay, and this is the most fantastic piece of kit. But the USB is in... Dog is going ballistic. It's just in there. You can just see the silver there. And it's really hard to get to. But if it was front or back, you would never get to it. Okay, good. Got that down. Now, all the time, considerations about where things are going to be mounted. I want that flight control to be ni mounted nice and level as well. It's got to know where the centre of the Earth is, where gravity acts towards. Right, now, our arms. Now what we've got here is these uh, bolts with these things. Now I don't really know if they just call them little feet, but um, I just saw a video by Mr. Steele, um, a fantastic flyer, and I'd be honoured one day, Mr. Steele, if you saw this video and said hello. We at Mueller Aviation and the rest of the Gateway Schools would love to invite you and all the other Rotorite, next Rotorite pilots to come and have a fly with us. One has already, Chad. Now Chad Nowak, actually, x right um, actually flew an Impulse RC frame 
called an alien back in was it 2015 Chad and won the first ever drone racing and freestyle competition in the world he was the world's first um, first winner in those competitions and he flew a frame by impulse an alien frame and it blew everyone away apparently Chad anyway Mr. Steele said so these are um, a load distributors okay they distribute the load of you know all those forces that are coming down onto this one point if I just had a nut going through there then all the stress is concentrated just on the head of that n uh, that um, nut that bolt but with the load distributor it actually just widens it a friend of mine Rog who builds full-size aircraft we call that a load focuser, is that it? Focuses the load on there, just like any crack or any scratch in aircraft grade aluminium. Right, so, this is going to go, uh, I don't know if anything else, through there, come up, one, two, three, the car card. Yep, fall down. Four, four, right, and then these arms, that's front, this little, it's called a key. Goes okay, so that direction. If you try to do it that way, it'll never work. Is that direction? I don't know, because I tried it. There. Checking these arms go with those motor groove, motor shaft grooves upwards. Number three will be fine. But number four is always a little bit of a hass. See it keying in. Chroma key, check, 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 and we are in. Bam, Look nice tight fit. Lovely, lovely. So I'll tell you I got this from Jacob. I did, I did, didn't I? Watch this. Take that. Right, we're going to now bring this easier. And bring this down. Oh. These are going to fit in these top nuts that have got the little teeth that bite into the carbon are going to fit in there. You don't want to put your fingers all over the board either, okay? Um, the grease on your fingertips will eat into the etching on the on the board. So, tr so handle them around the outside, handle them by the, the plastic parts. Don't be touching chips on a cold, dry winter's day. Short yourself um, on, a, on your um, like in your bathroom on the tap there, because that will go out through the metal to the ground with the copper. Brass, um, but don't be pulling your jumper off on a dry day and then touching the electronics because your static will discharge into the device, into the chip, and it'll do just a little bit of damage. Maybe not even enough to stuff it, but just a little bit. Then it happens against a little bit, and you'll start having these it, sort of these um, um, intermittent problems. Just checking that the holes are in the bottom before I do anything more. Right, fall off. The weight's coming off these. Right, and this will draw everything. It's biting a nice bit. Yeah, that's good. I can see it drawing in. Make sure nothing's cracked. Okay. 
Now, that's got everything down. From there, right, it will be mounting the FPV camera, mounting the motors, mounting the GPS, putting the top plate down. Camera is going to go be mounted. And here, yeah, because that's the top plate, and on in the top plate there's two grooves. That little battery mounting pad, friction pad goes on the very outside, so this will be the inside, and that will go there. Like that. No, it'll go like it'll go like that. Okay, and you mount it down onto the ground like that. With the camera on the inside. Just there. Two screws. Put you in now. Just pause you for a moment. And pause. Get this, oh, this tiny, tiny little one. Um, But easy. So it's going to go in there and then down so I'm do a top one. Top one. Benny. does not understand me at all. Okay. You can see how they're kind of like a sliding, like a, a rail that it, is it going in? There's some. So saying that um, Chad Nowak it's a sponsored pilot by Impulse. Impulse RC. Did you see what I did with that other? It is. It is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the mirror opposite of that one. Oops, someone breathed in the street. Someone breathed in the world. The world goes ballistic. Someone's alive. Therefore, it's cause for the dog to go off and do its nut. I will get this. I will have success. Let's see. Just be patient. Don't be rushed. I used to be really impatient with these things. But building drones and model aircraft and things. Because it's small, it teaches you patience. I reckon, I don't know if that's supposed to be, but um, let's just assume that we've done that. Probably, there's two washers there, once you go on the inside, one on the outside, so I'll swap that one over again. And uh, we'll just call it quits for the moment. Um, and for the third video, we will get the camera mounted down, we'll do the motors, and we'll find what we're going to do with that VTX, that 5.8 gigahertz, 600 milliwatt VTX, and also a receiver. And also I want to tidy up. Now some of these cables are way too long, and I'll make a decision whether I, I, um, I shorten those. Because it just looks really messy, these really, really long cables. That cable there, yeah, I might need to shorten. So we'll call it quits. Um, and thanks for being patient through this first part of the build or the video. It's starting to look like a drone. Cheers.